Now that we've talked about how a plane wave flows through space, we're going to start looking at power flow, which is described by the pointing vector S. And also, since we're talking about sinusoids, we'll also discuss the time average power density. Let's start with the pointing vector. So the pointing vector, commonly denoted with the letter S, is going to be E cross H. And that gives you the total amount of power density flowing through any given location. So if you have an electric field that's uh, propagating this way, and then you have your magnetic field that's uh, kind of 90 degrees off of that. So this is, this is uh, my, my artistic capabilities are stretched to the limit here. So I'm trying to describe here is that your E field and your H field are perpendicular to each other. And if you, if you take E cross H, your thumb's going to point this way. So the, the power flow and the wave propagation is going to be in this direction. And the, the total amount of energy per given area at any point you can get just by taking the available E field at that location and taking the cross product with available H field. That tells you the power flow is the, as well as the power density in any given location. And then separately, if you wanted to figure out what kind of power flow is going through a particular region, if you wanted, if you had a closed volume and you wanted to see how much power is coming out, you can calculate that by simply taking the closed surface integral of the pointing vector, so E cross H dS. That's the key conclusion that we're that we're working towards. But first of all, as in any any tradition in physics, let's start by making a really messy equation so that we can examine some relationships. So let's just start with the curl of H, which is equal to the current density, and then the displacement current, which is created by a change in magnetic flux over time. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take E dot of both sides, and then I'm going to use this vector identity, where if I'm, oops, if I'm taking the divergence of a cross product, I can write that as minus E dot the curl of H plus H dot the curl of E. So if I, if I plug that in, I get minus the divergence of the pointing vector E cross H is going to be equal to J dot E plus D by DT of D dot E plus oh, one half plus D by DT of one half B dot H. And now this, does this look familiar here? So this is the energy density due to the electric field, and this is the energy density due to the magnetic field, right? Now, uh, one, one last messy thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the negative sign over. So move this negative sign over. And then I'm also going to take the volume integral of both sides. And as part of that process, you can also apply the divergence theorem to the, to the divergence of E cross H dV to convert it into a surface integral. And then that gives me this gloriously messy equation here. So I'm going to get the closed surface integral of E cross H, so the closed surface integral of the pointing vector, meaning the power flow out of that closed surface is going to be equal to negative of the volume integral of J dot E plus D by DT, the volume integral of 1 half D dot E plus D by DT, uh, the volume integral of 1 half of B dot H dV. So I seriously ran out of room there, but this is uh, B dot H for if that wasn't clear. 
dv. Uh, volume integral. And so let's, the main purpose of this is I just wanted to point out what the different components are. So this is the power out of this closed surface. So any kind of closed surface where you have fields propagating. And that is going to be due to uh, three different sources, right? This is the current. J dot E is going to be equal to the current energy that's coming out. So J dot E is like V is uh, like voltage times current. So that gives you the total amount of energy due to current flow. And then that gives you, this gives you the total energy out of electric fields. And this gives you the total energy due to magnetic fields. So you can see how this expression, this expression gives you the total power coming out of a surface, out of a closed surface volume. And it, it consists of three things. The, it, it captures the current, the, any kind of current flow that's coming out, but also electric field flow that's coming out and magnetic field flow that's coming out. Now I also want to point out from a unit perspective, uh, S, the pointing vector, has units of watts per meter squared. So when you do this surface integral, what do you end up getting? Right, you get something in the units of watts, right? So the total amount of power that flows out in, in units of watts. Now let's tie this back to phasers and that description. Remember when we talked about phasers, I had described how E cross H should give you the direction of the power flow. So in let's look at what, let's transition and see if we're talking about phasers, you can also calculate the time average power density that's coming out. So let's again look at our simplified case where E is nicely in the x direction and H is going to be in the y direction. So this, and then that means that it's propagating in the z direction. And let's say eta is a complex number. So it's gonna have some kind of magnitude and then it's gonna have some kind of a phase component, right? So if you write this in a phasor form, uh, some magnitude e to the j, some angle, I'm just gonna write it this way. So this is the angle, this is the angle here, this is the magnitude. You'll find that the power density of the pointing vector the pointing vector is going to be E cross H, which gives you the power density of the propagation. And it's going to be in the Z direction because X cross Y is equal to Z. And then if you want to find the, the time average power density, uh, remember a sinusoid is positive for as long as it's negative, right? So if you take the time average, um, the, the sinusoids cancel. So, so all you end up having is the DC component of the power flow. So the time average power density, so this is the the curly bracket refers to average, or this bracket here, not curly bracket, triangle bracket, refers to the average is going to equal to one half the real part of E cross H conjugate. So this is the, this is the main expression that you want to remember. And if you already have E and H in phasor form, you're gonna find that that's going to be equal to one half the E the E field squared over eta, because remember, uh, you can write that magnitude wise, H is going to be E over eta, right? So E cross H is going to be E squared over eta, E to the minus two alpha Z. And then also this term cosine of theta, where theta is the angular quantity of the impedance between the two. Uh, and Remember this, uh, so this e to the alpha would be any kind of alpha term that exists in the e and the h. So note that when you do e cross h, now you have e to the minus two alpha. So even though the e field and h field, it decays as a function of e to the minus alpha z, if you're talking about the power, s decays by e to the minus two alpha z. And this is analogous to when in transmission lines, when we're talking about the voltage or the current, uh, if it decayed by e to, by an alpha kind of negative exponential shape, the power in transmission line terms like I times V is gonna give you E to the minus two alpha Z. So note that the rate of decay is now E to the minus two alpha Z instead of just alpha Z. So to review, um, we introduce the, the pointing vector, which tells you the, the, power, the power density at any point due to a propagating electromagnetic field. 
And so you calculate that by taking the cross product of E cross H. And if you take that, the surface integral of that quantity over a closed surface, that tells you how much power is flowing out of that volume in units of watts. And so in terms of calculating how much electromagnetic energy there is, this is how you calculate it for any location in space, and then in turn, um, the amount of flow coming out of any, any closed surface. And the other thing to remember is, so there are three components. There's the, there's the power flow due to current, power flow due to the electric field, power flow due to the magnetic field. And if we're talking specifically about phasers and you're given the phaser component, you can find the time average power flow by taking E cross H conjugate and then extracting the real part, which ends up being uh, this expression over here.